waiting. Will you join me? Hello, welcome back to Star Wars. My name is Phil, of course, I'm joined, as usual, by Matt, and this time Robin's absent. So good evening, Matt. How are you doing, my friend? Hey! Yeah, I'm good, my man. How are you? I'm surviving. I'm surviving. Um, good, good, good. Tonight's episode uh, is a little bit of a, a different one in terms of we actually had kind of an interesting discussion lined up, which I'm not going to reveal right now. So at the end of the show, we'll talk about that in, in two weeks' time. Uh, thoughts go to Robbie's not feeling particularly well tonight. However, what this means is Matt and I are going to preview what's probably going to be a very expensive Christmas for all of us with all the new shiny things to have come out over the last couple of weeks with Hasbro oh, Pulse and other bits and pieces of Oh, well. yes, my man. Let's do uh, it. We are, we're going we're gonna to slightly divulge from the proper toys and merchandise just for one second to, to talk about one book coming out next month which i really want which i think you'll want as well matt which is the art of the mandalorian oh my stuff. god yeah i didn't know if you'd if you'd seen this particular uh book no. yet. this is coming out in no. uh, november i think it's november 10th it's due out uh, so is this like the big Marvel ones I've got, you know, I've got like, the Art of yes. Iron Man 3 and the slipcase stuff. It's like that. Yeah, so it's like the Art of the Last Jedi, which I have, and other bits and pieces like that. I mean, oh, I absolutely love this concept art for the Mandalorian for Din Djarin oh, himself. Cool. Um, of course, concept art for uh, Baby Yoda, of course, for the, the Pram. Hey, and hey else, look at the bound pack. That's cool. I know, I know. It's a cool little ideas we, we could have had in uh, the Mandalorian. Of course, this is one of my favorite pieces, which is... Um, the director's attack, oh, wow. which is just beautiful. It's it's reminiscent of Ralph McQuarrie. This is all Doug, done by Doug Chiang, of course. Uh, anyone who knows mm. him, of course, knows he did the prequels and helps uh, on the sequels as well. He's a fantastic artist and concept That's artist. That's nice. Um, this is coming out in November, and I will definitely be picking a copy up for myself. But I wasn't sure if you'd seen it or not, so no, I thought man. you may want to see that because I thought that was rather tasty. I've talked about it on a the publishing lot, news. A lot of this is going to be new to me. Um, I saw bits and yeah. pieces from yeah. PulseCon this weekend. I was more mm. raging about hero quest um and i've sent like, the hot toy stuff which i usually see all the time i've sent yeah to you and robin like that new darth ball and things <sighs> Wait, you mean uh this new darth ball which we'll be talking about a little bit later oh, mm. oh. Mm. That, my wallet is just like I, I, I can only afford one hot toy and i've got it lined up for next year's captain rex i'm not regretting my choice however there are things that make me question my choice. <laughs> the, the more they're doing this, the less Marvel they're doing, the less my wallet starts weeping. So I'm fine. <laughs> this is this is true. This is true. But there's always going to be things that will pull you back, like the life size Baby Yoda. That's just going to pull anyone back in it because I, I I do want that. Um, I almost uh, pre-ordered that last year, man. Actually, I almost pre-ordered the uh, sideshow one as opposed to the yeah. Hot Toys one. Yeah, yeah. Three hundred and fifty quid at the time. I was like, this is a bargain. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, cool. I nearly went. I nearly went for it as well. Um, luckily, I didn't for my wallet's sake. However, I would have quite liked to have that. I mean, who doesn't want a life size baby Yoda just to, to make them feel happy all the time? <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so the art of the Mandalorian is coming out next week. I uh, next month. I have previewed it in Star Wars uh, publishing news. Now I'm going to give a heads up here. There wasn't one last month. There won't be one this month, and that's purely down to um, some things going in my personal life. I don't have the time at the moment to do those to dedicate that time to it because of some things that got in my life. Matt um, and Robin knows exactly what's going on. They understand. It's the that just... curse of 2020, my man. It's just, it's just the year for things to go wrong. It's fine. Uh, yes. I mean, this show is family friendly, so I won't be saying the exact thoughts are on my mind, but uh, yes, it has um, indeed. Uh, yeah. No lubricants were used in the making of this <laughs> year, but we're going to move uh, <laughs> swiftly on from talking about Astromex. Um to talking about lots of new shiny toys. And first, we're going to talk about, of course, it was um, PulseCon over the weekend, as you said. So from mm. Hazard Pulse, we got a lot of new shiny things. Now, before we go into the PulseCon cool. itself, I want to talk about um, the new HasLab product they revealed, of course, being the Razor Crest. Oh, look at it. Isn't it cool? Is it uh, 3.75 or 6? So this is the 3.75-inch scale. This is for the vintage collection. Um, so if this cool. Was to be fair, if this was in the six inch black series scale at 350 quid, that would be a bargain because this is 350 quid for the 3.75 inch version. Now they're re now they're revealing all the backers' um, perks at this point, so they've revealed a few other bits and pieces, and bits and pieces. But the most important one, though, is this little guy. You will be getting yourself a fully carded up 3.75 inch baby Yoda, which, considering the scale of this, he's going to be absolutely tiny. It's but unbelievable. I, I love it. I mean, so we had I love the, it. Um, we had Jabba's um, skiff done a couple of years ago, and I got, that was a controversial one at the time because it was North America and Canada only at first. Then when they realised they didn't have enough, was backers, it? They then, yes. They so then they've done 
they've done Hero Quest recently. Mm. You know that really old school games watcher board game is yes. legendary. Yeah, and they, they've redone Hero Quest with the expansions, which is really exciting. But it's US and Canada only, and I yeah. thought it was a licensing thing. But the fact the sale barge was as well, and this so is like. This- well, so much was their first. Kickstarter, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so this is yeah, okay. Haslab is their Kickstarter because this is the one where they go, look, we want to do this. However, it's not cost efficient for us to do it. If you want it, we will make it. We are, and, I mean, from a business point of view, they're going to be making minimal to no profit on these purely based on the amount of time it takes to design the product, make it, ship it, paint it, whatever mm-hmm. it is. This is a very much a tentpole product. This is a for the fans because, well, you buy everything else. If you, you know, fans will go out and buy. 10 different versions of Boba Fett, it funds one of these in terms of their actual production. Just like, for example, supercar makers can do one off um, a few million pound cars and not make much money off it because it helps promote the brand and sells their lower end products. Um, and this is the latest one, but in the initial one, they realized basically it didn't have enough backers. There's only 2000 ish at first from US and Canada. It's only when they opened up to Europe, they didn't have enough to then make the product. So I think on this one, they've immediately oh, wow. gone, okay. Now it's worldwide. Um, here are questions okay. on the same lines where they go, okay, we don't have a quite have enough backers, and then we'll make it online. Although some bits, some some of the ha- um, the pulse ones do come to the UK and Europe in in formal stockists where they will send out a limited number to certain places like um, Star right. Action or Capel and things like that. Because a lot um, a few months ago, Haslabs or the, their Kickstarter, effectively, mm. I, I think, um, did a two foot tall Sentinel from X Men. I have seen and it. Was like, it was glorious. Yeah, I, I was like, I want it. I, I really want it. Uh, didn't didn't back it because I don't like that kind of thing. And yeah. it turned up on Zavi. You can order it through Zavi. So it might be the same yeah. with the Razor, Quar- Razor Quest. Yes, Hero Razor Quest. Quest <laughs> but in space. Yeah, I'd play that. It's I mean, Hero Quest on the Razor Crest. Yeah, or Laser Quest on the on the Razor Crest. I'll take that. You know, um, it's better, man. It does indeed. No, this will be. I'm not sure if they will do the Razor Crest through Zavi. It might be one of those deals to help sell the last two through a major stockist, but the the, the smaller ones Maybe. Um, tend to come through. Like for example, like Cad Bane, for example, is a celebration exclusive. They then ship that over here via um, Star Action figures, comics and cocktails, and um, Kapow, and I think a couple of others. Both uh, you and I have used both Comic and Cocktails and Star Action. Of course, we know they are reptile. So if you ever see anything from them, you can trust them entirely. This is, you know, I won't get paid to say this. It's just I bought from them, uh, both of them, several times now. Um, mm. Sorry, I said to are... get my Marvel bits from. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they are very good. and They always come very well packaged as well. If anything's damaged, it's usually from Hasbro themselves. They're actually, I mean, I prefer Star Action where they package things over Comic and Cocktails. But either way, you, you know you're sorted. They, they look it... it's like Amazon. Is one of them split the twin packs as well, which is super cool. Um, uh, that was comic that <sighs> that one. I don't know, because it's like <laughs> Marvel Legends, which is like yeah. Black Series. I've yep. been doing double packs, and yes. I, think it, I think it's comic and cocktails that have been splitting down so you can buy them separately. Uh, which I think is yeah, really cool. You know, not did, everyone wants one old man for the Black, or whatever. Yeah, they did one for the Black Series, which was uh, Zuckers and Fallon. Although people intend mm. to buy that as one because, well, they're Zuckers and Fallen. They're kind of they're not very well known. They're, they're, they're called bounty hunters, but they are more of a niche thing. But they were an Amazon um, thing anyway. But I think Comic Con does split them up uh, if yeah, you so choose so. to get them. I'm um, down with it. I, li- I like when they do that, man. Like, not you don't all the time want both characters in the pack. So no, if you sure. just want to play with it, then why not? Exactly, exactly. And I always unbox mine. There's a several that aren't unbox purely for spatial reasons but i like to display my lights so to hand little dioramas i'm not there's only a few that i keep in box for certain reasons um and that's just a, a personal choice i don't mind if you're uh, if you're an inboxer or, or if you uh, prefer the bust them out whatever makes you happy that that's your choice at the end of the day um but there are many things coming out from uh has the first thing i talk about is the yeah, dude. um the scout uh trooper from uh, for an order, which to be fair, at the moment though, I can't help but see a biker trooper and just think of the Mandalorian and watching him punch the the bag. It just it makes me cry just a little bit on the inside. However, it is a very nice figure. And it looks like a flaming stick, though. It doesn't look like a shock stave. It looks like a stick on fire. It, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I can't unsee it, but it, it's cool. I think I would have much rather a scout with the bike and the well, child in have- the pouch. They have done that, of course, recently uh, in the form of the Heroes of Endor set. Um, oh, is the bike in that? The bike is in that, indeed. Hang oh, on, I didn't just, know that. Uh, bring up the know that. Heroes of Endor set. 
and I will uh, put that on screen for those of you who haven't seen it because this is now out in the UK. This was, again, this was a celebration exclusive, but this was 120 quid. You get this from Star Action Figures, but this was. Um, I wanted to get this, I just couldn't afford it, and probably for a very good reason. I've written the space for it either. However, it is extra. So four, four pack? Uh, yes, because it's Han, Leia, Luke, and Tebow. Or Pablo. I can't remember which one it is for the, the Ewoks. Uh, let me bring it up. Uh, here we go. You get a, you get an Ewok in it, basically. Yeah, you get an Ewok. <laughs> we can't we can't sell these Ewoks separate, so I'm gonna package them with a bunch of other people. Yeah, the, they are it's available cool. individually now. Uh, but you do oh, get the speed bike in it, of course, and it is rather nice. Uh, the Luke mm. is very nice from it as well, but that they, they are available separately. They're now actually so part of Wave 27, the next wave of Black Series figures, is uh, a lot of these figures now in division including the armor now we're going to get to the armor in a little bit because that's that's been the vote of contention actually no might as well jump into it right now purely because i is got some yeah. thoughts on this as well distribution because... wise so tell us about the armor phil so the armor this is supposed to be a star wars celebration exclusive although no one told the stockists they were told that everyone's getting a set number uh they're told they're getting 50 of, uh, of each one so people put them up for pre-order uh a few people have gotten delivered already people waiting on shipments it's absolutely fine this is they are doing the figure separately you won't get the fur that she has on her back you won't get some of the tools but you are at least getting her individually however we all found out yesterday the fact that Hasbro told me, like, oh, no, no, no. This was properly a celebration exclusive. You're not getting 50 mm. of each one, each stockist. No, you're getting seven. So um, it's kind of like a, a tenuous link, I guess. But I think there's a reason mm. for this. Uh, Games Workshop, as we know, tend to do those limited store anniversary models. Yeah. And earlier this year, the plan for this year's store opening miniature was a Katachan Colonel. Um, based on Carl Weathers in Predator. So this is the tenuous link, right? Yes, I've seen that one. It's a really nice mini as well. You've seen him, yeah? What, what's the yeah, matter? Yeah, yeah. Jen pushing too many pencils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happened during lockdown, what they did when stores reopened, they gave a very limited allocation of these models to independent stores. Yeah. But we're talking like two and three. And they were going on eBay and they were just like, here guys, sell these to recoup profit. But the reason for it, it turns out, was that it was originally the first Games Workshop store birthday in the year is Milton Keynes. Mm. And they'd made like a set amount of like a hundred of these models to give Milton Keynes to sell mm. on the day. And when that didn't happen, they only produced a small batch. So they sent them out, which was the limited quantity. So if yeah. Hasbro were expecting this to be a celebration exclusive, they're they probably only made celebration. Yeah. that many. And then went, oh, celebration's not happening. Let's dispatch these to people. Yeah, and yep. communications are awful. They should have said. Say, someone somewhere put the wrong thing in the email. Instead of going, we are sending you mm. 50 each, it's a 50 for the UK. That's what I think someone's yeah. done. And they probably. then put their pre-orders up and gone, oh no. So the few, few people that have them um, of course, are very happy. Those who don't uh, are all bricking it at the moment to see if they're going to get one or not. And those who are going to resell them, of course, are going to make a massive um, profit. Of course they are, yeah. And that'll be it. There'll be a certain amount made for an event mm. which they can't sell at the event. And it makes no sense to have stock just sat there. For right now, let's be well, honest, an indefinite yeah, amount of time. They, they did the same with Cad Bane just before that. And I have my celebration Cad Bane. And You've I'm got Cad, yeah. Yeah, it is. I sent you a picture also arrived. It is beautiful. Um, it's not uh, it's not within reach currently, but it is uh, here. I'll get it at some point. Um, but yes, so the armor is one of those bones of contention for people at the moment. It is a beautiful mm. um, thing, but it's coming out individually as well. That's the, so people aren't panicking too much because I know you can still get it. It's just you don't get the, her fur, which I think is... I'd rather they did her without the tools than without the fur because you that's kind of more of her actual outfit <laughs> rather than just the accessories, which is what they've done in the past for Rex and uh, other Black Series um, convention exclusives. They've gone, you get the figure, you just don't get the accessories. This is a case of they've taken away part of her actual outfit. Which okay, I hidden. will ask, does she have hmm. the boots with the fur? Oh, she has the boots with the fur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she hit the floor, then shorty got low. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, I'm not quite sure if she hit the floor, but uh, she managed to escape all the death troopers, and that's all that matters for us. They hit the floor. They hit the floor because uh, Shorty went low and she <laughs> took them out of the legs. 
She did indeed. Oh, who knows? That was predicting Star Wars many, many years ago when we were. Cheer to John Favreau. Uh, <laughs> does she have those apple bottom jeans? <laughs> we need to know. This is vital information for season two. I don't want to know more about Moff Gideon. I need to know about the armorous jeans. <laughs> Oh dear. sorry, Giancarlo Esposito. Sorry, move over. You're you're irrelevant now. I don't care about the dark save, but I need to know about items of clothing. Uh, <laughs> what has my life come to at this point? Um <laughs> we've had a few other bits of pizza reviewed over Hascon as well. One of the ones I'm more excited yeah, for. Unfortunately, the the pictures I managed to get in this a very short amount of time aren't particularly great. We'll post ah, more, uh, on our the potato Facebook. cam strikes again. <laughs> the potato cam does strike again. However, we have the dark visions ray. Uh, which I really comes like with chopsticks. Figure. She comes yes. with chopsticks. She does indeed. Cool. Um, Excellent. I'm so glad yeah, Robin's not here. If you think yeah. he's watching this, he's just like, man, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Those are chopsticks. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he'll correct me and he'll blaspheme everywhere else. It's fine. Of course, blaspheme. It's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. He's not here. I can say what I like. Uh, to be fair, it's my show, <laughs> so I like anyway. Um, but yes, we do have Dark Vision Ray. We have a few other bits and pieces coming up for the uh, Black Series line as well. But mainly it's just reissues and re-releases. Uh, you have the Vintage Collection Commander Cody now coming out along with Thrawn. Now, Thrawn is very interesting because Thrawn for me only came out uh, in 2016, 2017. So it wasn't that long ago. Yes, it's been out of print for um, that long anyway. Um, but for them to bring it back in the archive series is very different because the ones they have been around, like Commander Cody, for example, was, oh, 2015, 2016. So you're talking quite a little while ago now. Uh, same with um, a couple of the archive figures, like Bosk, for example, is in the very first wave, which is mm. why it's taken him forever to come out again. So however they do him, however they say, I don't care because Thrawn's interesting. He was one of the first lines of the new digital paint as well, whereas Cody wasn't. Now, Cody's being brought back. I will be getting my hands on Cody to complete the com- clone commander set. Um, you also have the clone <laughs> um, lieutenant and um, just phase one standard trooper. I've, I've already got clone, phase one sergeant, but it's clones and me. I'll be getting them all because I have a problem. However, one for you, Matt, of course. Um, again, sorry, oh, potato cam. However, the, hit the, me up. The mm. Return of the Jedi. Boba Fett, including a blaster that can be sliced in half. Oh, I posted... What was that I said about this when it came up in the group chat? You said it, yeah, it looks like Return of the Jedi. Went, well, yes, it's in the name <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> uh, I think it's cool. I, I like the flame effect. I think that's wicked. But I've oh, got so really many weird. Boba Fetts, dude. Right? I don't remember when Force Awakens first came out. Yeah. And I was uh, shopping around Tesco. And they had the new action figures, and I've got this this carded Boba Fett from The Force mm. Awakens. So I was like, he's definitely in this movie. <laughs> it, look, he's in the action figure line. He's going to be in this movie. Obviously, wasn't, but yeah, I've got so many Boba Fetts. But that's nice. Is he six six inch? That six one? inch. This is Black Series scale. Yeah, yeah. These oh. are all Black Series uh, figs I'm talking about at the moment. But yes, but to be fair though, it's like with me though. Can you ever really have enough Boba Fett though, Matt? Can you really ever have enough? I mean, that's ultimately true. Did you? I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't here last week, but um, Tamara Morrison's agent going, we to- who's playing Boba Fett? <laughs> we were talking about that on our last show. Yes. Uh, yes, we were. Um, I still think it's Rex or it could be both because, well, he's a clone. It's That'd be so good is- if it's just him 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we're both right, I guess. Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. Everybody wins. Everybody um, wins. Is ah oh. again? That's actually the Honda Anaka though. I I I love Honda. The fact that he's now out in Black Series. I need to get him at some point for my collection. I really do. Um, yes. So that's the that's the Black Series line so far. Vintage collection. Cool. We have the new uh, first images now of the Tanta V four. Um, <laughs> I've, I've like, seen I've seen this all over Facebook, but the the images outside the box looked so uninspiring and really boring. It's just ah, oh, here's a white rectangle. Enjoy. <laughs> right, this is the problem. <laughs> looks amazing in the context of it. It's Star Wars, but it's also white. There isn't much <laughs> it's just, detail. <laughs> It's just you could get a shoebox, cut one of the edges off, cut a door in, and just paint it yep. white, and it would look the same. Um, yep. Yeah, cool idea. I like I like the set piece thing, but I'd like to see more interesting ones, like maybe like the bridge from Empire. Uh, I mean, yes. Yeah, give Again. me the bounty hunter bridge. That'd be cool. Yeah, or, or Jabba's like... palace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, give me Boba um... with that Twi'lek, so it can be like so. Or give us um, Obi Wan versus Vader in Episode Four. Give us that kind of corridor scene. That you get those, those little pieces they could do. 
I really vaguely remember action figures from when I was a kid, which mm. were like that. I, I'm pretty sure I had an Obi Wan and a Boba Fett and like a little set piece, but yeah, they weren't yeah, action yeah. figures. They were just fixed standees. Yeah, wasn't was it Force Unleashed? It might have been Force Unleashed. I think it was Force Unleashed. I think those were cool figures, they, man. They were, those they were, were cool. They were indeed. Was it Force um, Unleashed? Do you know the ones I mean, though? Yeah, I know. I know the they're like ones dioramas, one. Yeah. Yes, I mean they, they've done a couple of dioramas, uh, set pieces, like they call them um, centerpieces for the Black Series. I've got one of them. I've got the Vader one. Uh, they didn't really tick off because, well, they they only did. I think they did. They did Hoth, which was the ATAT foot over Luke. You had the uh, Vader oh, tend to be four corridor scene, which was, I've got. Wasn't there a Kylo stop in the bolt? There was, and there was also. Um, Oh, there was one more, which is Kylo and Ray in the forest on Starkiller. So they, they, they're, 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 those are nice five. figures, dude. They're, they're, they are really nice display pieces. I they think are lovely display they, pieces. They are indeed. I have the Vader one uh, on my mm. shelf, but I have it with my BT One Triple Zero and my Doctor Aphra as well, because, because well, I love my Why BT One. Yeah, 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 I mean BT One Triple Zero, and I got my little diorama on one of my shelves of my many cabinets, and did yeah, that's vastly run out. He has run out of space. So I've got six Black Series figures that need to go into the cabinet. They haven't found room for yet, and I've still got more turning up because um, somewhere online, uh, you've got the IKEA Death Elf, haven't you? Yes, I have three yes. of them. <laughs> somewhere <laughs> online, someone's made. I don't know. I think this makes no difference to what I'm saying. I'm just going to yeah. box my head. The step um, shelves. They... Intermediate shelves. So yes. they've made shelves to put in between. Um, so it could be worth looking at some of those, dude. It, it gives you those be, extra shelving. It could do. It could do. I'm gonna, I am going to look into something like that uh, in the future for sure. However, though, as much as that it's kind of uninspiring by itself, though, I do think, though, if you have something like this on a shelf and you can set up a diorama, it would look cool. I just think, out as you say, outside the box without any surroundings, it's a bit uninspiring. You put so that on dumb, a shelf man. and if you light that up, that could look cool. If you fill it with like eight stormtroopers, three rebel troopers, but yeah. like look in the bottom left, it's just there's nothing about that that screams by me. I'd Exa much rather. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, but it's one of those things. It has potential, but it's not. I don't think it's quite realised it yet. Uh, but no, we shall see. Maybe like uh, a section of Boss Eisley Cantina, but then you could like apply even... weathering powders and tie yeah. it up a bit. Indeed. Evening, Dave. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yes, no, for sure. You could. Um, and in fact, you and I would probably give that a fairly good go as well, especially yeah. I'd light it and put a soundboard underneath it and have the yeah. that ominous music from when you have Vader first step through the corridor on, on the Tantive. And, oh, it creates something evocative. Yeah. There. But, but there's potential there and the people will do it. Um, but I still think it's, it's a cool little thing they've done, but Although, to be fair, you talk about bridges, though, I still think the um, the gantry from Empire Strikes Back would have been a really cool one to do as well. 100%, because you could Lego, have had but... the consoles yeah. underneath and yeah. Vader and the... Like, any good modeler could make mm. that Tantive entrance out of Plasticard. Yeah. Give enough time, enough uh, effort. Yes, you, you could for sure. Anyone However, could scratch build that. Yeah, however, for, for the irregular fan, it's still something cool, but not something you and I probably would uh, go out and buy. Um, moving pass. on, though, from... Yeah, for now, it's a hard pass, but at the same time, I, I'm not <laughs> going to dismiss it entirely. I think it's really cool, but we're going to move on It's from, a no from me. It's a no from me. Um, we're going to move on from <laughs> uh, being Dragon's Den and talking about the uh, Vintage Collection. The other thing, of course, to talk about was the, the Racer's Crest. We'll talk about some kind of little quirky things to come out as well. One thing I want to talk about is the new um, Regal Robot Rancor prop replica. This is a one-to-one -one oh. scale replica of the puppet from Return of the Jedi. Uh, I know the price <laughs> of this. Matt! <laughs> As you said, it's a one-one scale rancor. I was like, "Hang on a second, what?" <laughs> and then you said "puppet from Jedi." I got really yeah. excited because Regal Robot do cool stuff, man. They, it was like they, the they Chewy Bust and uh, do they do the Palpatine's the, chair, the Mythosaur skull, and things? Yeah, they do Palp's chair as well. Yes, so I know the price yeah. for this particular one. Do you want to hazard a guess? How much a one-to-one -one scale replica of the puppet from a Jedi will cost you? But not an actual one-to-one -one scale rancor. No, because no, that the would puppet, be ridiculous. not yes. Well, that's what that's when you started talking. I was just like, Are you kidding me? This is great. Um, oh, <laughs> it's Regal Robot. Um, what's it made of? Uh, it's uh, hang on a second, I have the information All right. Is, here. is it polystone? Yes, it's a full on, it's, poly, uh, it's polystone. Yeah, um, 
So there's a polystone one one scale rancor. It's one one scale. It's not even one sixth, but it's of the puppet. Yeah. Yep. How how big was it? It's only a puppet. How big was the puppet? Uh, a, I want to say eighteen inches. I can't remember. Eighteen inches. Mm. I want to say about seven hundred and fifty pounds. Keep going. No, because yeah, I no. Oh, uh, yep. Keep going. Uh, I feel like I'm on the prices right, but I'm really bad at it. <laughs> I've just got like an actual scale rancor in my head. I'm like thirty thousand pounds. Um, I or low. I, I or low. <laughs> um, fifteen hundred quid. Keep going. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a limited run product? Uh, it may be, but it's should, for the price it should be two and a half grand. A little bit more. It, this is three thousand dollars. Why? <laughs> Why is that three thousand? I'm sorry. So the the Wear Workshop Lord of the Rings stuff they do, which are the one sixth polystone statues, are only about three four hundred quid each. Yeah. I mean, and there are you've seen my Gandalf. Yeah. It's like eighteen yes. inches tall. Yeah. Why is this three grand? I don't know why, but my god, I'm not paying that for it. I have a, a yeah. I mean, there be I, an actual life size rancor for that. I mean, for that you could buy what eight Hot Toys figures. About running at three. More three, three, than three, that, three. dude. You're looking probably about fifteen, depending which ones you get. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd rather have fifteen over that. Don't yeah. Get me wrong, That's cool. Does he come with the guard, like the guy who raises it? Uh, Malikili? No, he doesn't come with anything. It's just the rankle. Nah, man, I have no room for that in my life. I'm sorry. If it was like 400 quid, I'd be like, that's amazing. You should buy it. But three grand feels excessively greedy. It's a, it, it, is. Is a, it is a little uh, on the nose. Um, and Why is it three grand? <laughs> it would crush your wallet harder than the gate that crushed its back. It's just it's like, it, it's not worth it. I mean, to be fair, it's not <laughs> he out could there. probably. You could probably pay Mark Hamill to throw a rock at you for the price of that rank. You could have the rancor experience <laughs> with Mark Hamill, probably yeah. for the same amount of money. It's it's shoot, so probably true, do it for yeah. free, man. Be like, hey, Mark, yeah. throw a stone at me. Indeed, indeed. Oh, and we're going to move on from one ridiculous product to another one with the uh, rather limited edition, rather hilarious uh, Mandalorian <laughs> Polaroid. <laughs> Why? Because what, the, what, the Polaroid what's so special itself, about it? So the Polaroid itself, when they print out, have the uh, mud horn symbol on the bottom of the Polaroid. Um, they have some really cool symbols on it. I mean, I don't get it myself, but I'm cool. here for dumb merchandise. If if, if like, well, you're you can, Star you can Wars. buy that and go old school, taking photos of your three grand rancor as your divorce papers are being signed in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> the thing being, I'm all for dumb merchandise and no other fandom, mm. or I, I don't want to use the word saga, but what's the word I'm looking for? Franchise? Probably fandom. Franchise, thank you. Mm. No other franchise does merch as dumb as Star Wars does. Yeah. I remember the Jar Jar Binks backpack when Phantom Menace came out, man. Star Wars will brand anything. Oh, branding a Polaroid camera? Them. Yeah. Why? I get it, but. It's. I don't get it. I lied. I don't understand it. Indeed, it just reminded me because I didn't. For some reason, the picture didn't save. If it was like a Baby Yoda Pez dispenser, I'd be like, "Yeah, that's cool. I, I love that uh, merchandise." They have. They but... have just done that though. Oh, have they really? Shoot. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I kid you not. They have. They have just announced um, uh, a Mandalorian. Baby Yoda and Mando Pez dispenser. Although I didn't, I found the pictures. But it was a little too late. Um, but the, so the you, Pez so will you, look like Din Djarin's tongue. <laughs> however, you talking about Jar Jar has reminded me because the picture didn't save properly, and now I have just managed to get it back. Jar Jar Black Series is coming. <sighs> oh, I'm excited. Uh, do you know what? It's actually quite a nice figure. Like the the color work on it is lovely. It is. That's a, a potato can at work. However, it comes with the the javelin, the shield. And the the bombs as well. Actually, you get a lot in it. It's actually a really nice uh, little set, and it's 
it's time for Jar Jar Love. It really is. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. To, I, I, I will probably get that for the collection at some point. It's not words many people thought you'd say. Um, Are they going to yeah. do a Qui Gon and? Yeah, you're right. Star yes, Wars Star Wars, with the price. price. Yeah. Are they going to do a Qui Gon and Obi Wan with like the rebreathers for when they dive into Naboo? Oh, uh, they should give us the weird so... or not Stingray, but the thing they sail to Naboo at, not Naboo, the, the Gungan Sea. The Mongo. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Because I'd like yes. one of them. That's kind of cool. That, that would be cool. Uh, they have actually done uh, a Qui Gon and uh, Obi Black series already for episode one. So. You you could quite conceivably have that. Um, that would be yes, cool. That would be a cool thing. Uh, yes, yes, you do get a lot of poodle with the uh, the, uh, the Jar Jar <laughs> thing for sure. Um, no, looking forward to that um, one coming out. And they have announced a few more vintage collection series figures as well. I haven't got the pictures for those, but it does include episode two, Attack of the Clones, uh, Anakin. Uh, it includes episode one, Padme and Madala. It includes the Rogue One. Uh, rebel trooper that comes with this particular set as well uh and then moving on from the ridiculous to the cool because it's lego the nebulon uh b frigger 459 that's, pieces that's... has been asked now this is an sdcc cool. exclusive um this will be sold again through online retailers i don't know where yet robin will be able to tell you that more because that's uh his wheelhouse uh i'm very excited to see this now they although it does irk me slightly so early in the year they did a vote, a fan vote. What do you want to see next next UCS? Which included the Nebulon B Freighter, the Thai Bomber, and the uh, LATI gunship. So, of course, the Republic gunship won because everyone wants a Republic gunship. Those are cool. Yeah, those are really cool designed um, ships as well. Yeah, which though means they've had this waiting, and instead of going, here's the next UCS, they've just slapped SDCC on it and gone, here you go, have it instead. So you know they've made them all, they're just waiting for... (laughs) They just hope the vote would go the other way. (laughs) Well, it's not that. They've just gone, cool, we're going to release it anyway. It just depends on which label you want us to put on it. Mm. Oh, the Republic Guns should be cool. I'm disappointed it's 459 pieces. That's tiny. That is relatively small, although people have paid more for less. I mean, I know, for example, Dave recently has just got the um, best spin set from uh, the the Cloud City one they just done for uh, Lego, which was the Luke and Vader uh, mm. scene from that. I know he paid well over a hundred for that, which to each their own. But I couldn't, I couldn't justify. It. It's a very uh, cool set. Four hundred fifty nine pieces just doesn't sound like a lot for something like that. Yeah. If it well, was I, like, oh, what was the Falcon like? Three thousand? Oh god, yeah, the Falcon's like three hundred and ninety-eight, yeah. something like that. It's ridiculous, yeah, and that's six hundred and fifty quid. Hmm. Um, I, so yeah. it's it's one of those things that again, Lego does have its fans. Although I will direct you to Dave's channel, The Life of Brian. Go check him out uh, because he t- put a video up of him building that um, Bespin set. He wasn't going to open it first, but he had to. As soon as he got his hand, he knew he had to open it and build it. He's filming it for his channel, so go and check that out because it is a fantastic um, video. Uh, and that is it for Lego. So Matt seems to be thinking of something here. No, I'm just wondering because I've got the Milano from Guardians 1, like the big yes. Milano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was like over two bags. It's got to be more than 450 pieces, but that was only like 80 quid. Uh that was a 200 plus piece set, wasn't it? Oh, is it's the big, big, it's the first Milano because oh, oh, yeah, the yeah, second yeah, yeah. one was a smaller set. Yes, no, I remember your first one, yes. Um, and I was across two books, that was huge. Yeah, it still but, is huge, it's right there. Yeah. But and I, I do have the UCS Sandcrawl, thanks to Robin, uh, which I still need to finish building at some point. Yes, uh, you do, yeah, yeah, but uh, it lived in my car for uh, well over a year, it was hilarious. Um, I remember that, but yeah, so this is coming out. Uh, I don't know where, I don't know when Robin will be talking more when he gets back uh, for our next show. Um, and we're going to wrap up the show by talking about the new uh, Hot Toys figures that have been announced because they are rather tasty and there's rather a lot of them. I love Hot Toys. They, they've so they've they've stopped bringing out Spider Man now and they've moved on to Clone Wars, which is super bizarre. You say that when they just announced the Iron Spider, which looks incredible. Oh and no, I, that's the they announced it last year. That's the final product mm. pictures. He's lovely. I'm, it's the comic book one. Yeah, I'm, I know. I may have lost my mind at it just slightly. It's um, nice. It's a nice figure. It, so that that nice, mall, though. nice doesn't even describe it, mate. It's beautiful, and I want <laughs> it, <laughs> but I can't afford it. But yeah, so yeah, this mall is just this mall is just so He's lovely. Nice. He is nice. He is beautiful, and the, the, I love the saber because it actually made me go back and rewatch. 
the Clone Wars just to look at his lightsaber because I my mind hadn't twigged that his double ended saber, the second half of it was well new. Because of course he's only got the oh, single blade it? after episode one. Of course and, he does, yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's attention to detail. That's cool. I like that. So they've they've gone right in it. So if you look at the, the top half here on the top left, um you can actually see that is a brand oh, new shoot, brand new half yeah. of the saber. Um which is why if you And I love again, how they do the blades, man, and like the little fans. Oh god, those are That's the way really the light cool. they do that is just is stunning. Mm, um it's really smart. The other two they've announced for it uh, of like, and also to be fair, Maul doesn't just come with Maul. Maul also comes with his uh, casing, his um, cartouche, his sarcophagus. Uh, sorry, mm. that you see in the end of Clone Wars. Uh, alongside him, are, of course, the brand new releases of Captain Rex, which is the 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 one Hot Toys I have on. Uh, well, I'm still waiting to see here on my slot yet, for it, let alone my pre-order, but I still want to get that. Uh, along with Ahsoka, and of course, the new Coruscant Guard, which again they have just announced, which. Oh, just beautiful. They'll be cheap as well, dude. Like if if you're gonna, this is like anyone Star Wars wise. If you, your gateway into hot toys is Star Wars, stormtroopers are always cheap. I picked up my first order trooper, I think, for like eighty quid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coruscant trooper, Sith troopers, all the troopers that, with the exception of like the scout trooper on the bike, because he was Mondo expensive. With the exception of the names troopers, yes. Yeah, your because... generic troopers are relatively cheap. Yeah, um, you're looking about 180 quid for them. Whereas this is Commander Cody, who's going to be a little bit more. Um, 250? 250? Yes, mark? something something like that. 250. Yeah, I mean Rex is going to cost me if I get it through um, our mutual friend. It will be 260. Now, yeah, Zavi will, Zavi will do it for 330. You get other places like from the planet with 330, 300. You, if you get it through the right person, the right network you'll get it for 260 250 yeah. if you know where if you're willing to shop around and willing to to find it you can get it for those prices but yes generic ones will cost you this bit less because well named mm -hmm. characters always do because a little bit more they put a little bit more detail into them and that's not me knocking the detail on the generic figures you just know that when it comes to a oh. named character people want to put the extra little bar yeah you can't treat a first order stormtrooper the same as you would captain rex because no. it's a helmetless figure with two guns yeah, like, there's nothing to it. Whereas Rex, you've got the face sculpt and all that. Um, but yeah, the yeah, the Ahsoka's lovely. The mall is great. Uh, the Clone Wars stuff is a really cool. We said this before on the show. Mm. It's such a cool reimagining of going. This is what they look like animated. How are they look like real? Yeah, um, yeah, sick man. But the other one is the um, Ahsoka lightsabers. Yes, now I do have that. And again, unfortunately, this is going to be um, potato cam for you because um, my because there's a. Big thing that everyone's seen the box art and gone, that's Rosario Dawson. Right, I'm going to get to that in just a second. So first of all, I'm going to bring up, uh, because there's, there's, there's three things I want to talk about. One is the art, and we'll get mm. on to the other two things in a second. So first off, I do apologize for the potato quality. Again, I'll be putting these on our Instagram and Facebook at some point. So yes, you can't really tell, unfortunately. It, so what they've done, and this isn't exclusive to, to Ahsoka. Now, people are saying it's Rosario Dawson because they're like this because of the way the picture is done. If you look at Ezra, Kanan, Hera, Sabine, any of the box art, the new Black Series figures, they have done a more realistic styling of them mm. on those artworks because they're trying to bring them from animated to that more live action feel when they sell them. So this isn't mm -hmm. a Rosario Dawson confirmed. This is a, this just happens to look a bit like her because this is the style of art they've gone with for the Black Series figures. People are just hyped for Mando season two, dude. I'm, oh, I'm all for are. it. Oh, of course, yeah. For I'm, it, I, I'm not saying I'm not, but I'm explaining the reason why the art is how it is, not compared to people's beliefs of why it is. Who, um, who they want it to be. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The other thing, yeah. I mean, don't get wrong, this is a really cool saber. The price, however, is not. Oh, but they're all expensive, aren't they? No, 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 no. Black no. Series sabers. No, no, this is different, and I'll tell you for why. The regular Black Series, figure, uh, Black Series sabers, you're looking at between 100 and 50 to 180 quid this is 230 to 260 because it changes color now oh. i'm building my own custom saber and it's costing me mm. about the 260 to 280 mark uh i mm. still need to get a few more parts for it now this goes from being blue to being white now uh oh, sorry uh green to being blue sorry Oh, okay. uh, and it's really cool. You can do that. You can remove the kyber crystal. However, the ones they do at Galaxy's Edge, which you can change the crystals for, are two hundred bucks. So it's about one hundred and eighty quid. So you're already charging more than that for something that does that 
can only change to two colors, whereas the, the Galaxy's Edge ones can change to anything you, as long as you've got the Kyber Crystal for it. My but that's not going to be a Soka's handle, is it? Yes, it is. The one that Galaxy's Edge, which you can buy, the Legacy oh, is it really? of this, which can do that, is 180. See, in order to so do more, that, though, especially from where we are, it's more expensive. You gotta, mm. you gotta pay for plane tickets, hotels. It's cheaper in the long run just to buy the Black Series one. Of course, it is. But the, the more, <laughs> it's just weird. The more mass-produced version is more expensive than the the more niche one you get at the uh, Galaxy Edge itself. But it's that hey, ho, bro. Yeah. And my particular one can change to sixty-four different colors and have uh, one hundred and twenty other sound fonts on it. So. But it's going to be cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that. But that is yeah, uh, cool. everything that's come out over the weekend, over the last couple of weeks, in terms of uh, Hasbro PulseCon and uh, and um, just generic announcements. Again, we are in October. Christmas is only two months away. Um, and we're going to round off the, the show with a nice little piece of, if you have to choose one bit, if Santa's going to come down your chimney, Matt, and he, he leaves you one present from all this lot, what's it going to be? The Rancor, so I can sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy something cooler. Now, nah, man, I like. I'd probably say the so like seriously. If it wasn't allowed resale, I would. Yeah. I'd probably say the Razor Quest. Uh, Razor Quest. I'm doing it again. The yeah. Razor Crest. I'd probably say that because it's sick. It's really cool. Um, big spaceships are always fun. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm not a massive, huge much guy. So I'd say the Razor Crest because it's mm. rad, and I want that little shocked baby Yoda. Um, yeah. I don't know where I'd put it. It just looks horrified, and I love it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, or the Rancor, man, just to sell it and then. I'll just go buy four Razor Crests and <laughs> race them like paper airplanes. I mean, that would be kind of cool. That would be cool. I mean, for me personally, yeah, God, let's go. God I mean, Darth Maul, especially with the fact you get the sarcophagus as well. I mean, zoom, zoom. He's cool. It has to be done. Has to be done. Um, but yes, that's our little um, merch show for tonight. We've we'll be back mm. uh, in two weeks' time. We're talking about the uh, animated legacy of Star Wars because <laughs> over the weekend it was the <laughs> six year and twelve year anniversary of Rebels and Clone Wars. Yeah, that, well, this is the thing. This is going to be an interesting point because Rob and I, yes, are we are hardcore. We are your hardcore fans. We have watched everything apart from Robin hasn't watched Resistance, no matter how much I hound him to do so. Um, <laughs> Whereas, Matt, you haven't really watched much of the animated world at all. Doesn't grab me. And this is what we said tonight. So Phil was kind of in the pre-show. I was like, right, guys, uh, tonight we're, we're going to talk about this animated series. I was like, without Robin, no, because yeah. I don't watch them. And all it's going to be is you go, this is really cool. And I'm going to go, uh-huh. And this impacts the universe like this. Does it? Because I've not seen it. And I'm just going to rage about the mixed media thing. So... Yeah, <laughs> that's why it suddenly changed up. So let's just talk about cool things you can buy. It's like, yeah, I'm down, down with that. Um, yeah, exactly. It'd be an interesting perspective. Like, you know, Rebels, I couldn't get into, and Clone Wars, I made it up not all the way through and just didn't grab me. So mm. it wouldn't have been a particularly enthralling episode this evening. Yeah. <laughs> with you going, this is really cool. And we going, is it? Indeed, indeed. But we shall see. We'll be too excited to talk about that. Uh, until next time, not much left to say apart from thank you so much for watching. I will be getting the audios out soon. I know I keep saying this every time we do it, but as I said, things get in my own personal life. But you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter uh, at the Star Wars Podcast, at Star Wars Pod, uh, at Star Wars 2020 on Instagram, um, in my handle there. Um, until next time, though, we want, uh, we, well, we haven't been that one. We've been the Star Wars. Until next time, may the force <laughs> be with you. Good night. Observe. Look up. <laughs>